Hello chess lovers, Soren is here and I have a fantastic game for you played by Maxim Vacher Legrov against Robert Fontaine. This game was played in 2007 at French Championship. Robert Fontaine had white pieces and he started with knight f3 and f5 by Anvil. He goes for this razor sharp Dutch defense d4, knight f6, g3, g6. Now Black is choosing the Leningrad Dutch, bishop g2, bishop g7. We see castling by both sides c4, d6, knight c3, and knight c6. Another popular alternative is playing c6 and then knight a6, knight c6. Seven. But in the game we see knight c6, b3, e5, of course a very important move in dash defense, you have to always bring into life this e5 idea, d takes e5, d takes e5, bishop a3. Right now the rook on f8 square is hanging, but in this position Envil made a risky decision. He played e4 and went for an exchange sacrifice. White accepted the sacrifice and captured on f8. Queen takes f8. Now but let's see where is black's compensation. Knight d4. Knight takes d4, queen takes d4, and bishop e6. Already there is a very dangerous knight d5 threat. Queen d2, that's why the queen retreats back, and h5. Envil is starting an immediate attack on the king's side. Rook d1, here we go, h4. Queen g5, the pawn on g6 is hanging, that's why we see king f7. And at the same time, black is freeing the 8th rank for the rook. Queen f4. Queen c5, knight b5. Well, actually, capturing on h4 is also playable, though this can give black some counter-attacking chances. That's why after queen c5, white decided to play knight b5. Now comes h takes g3, h takes g3, and rook c8, black is protecting the pawn on c7. Knight d4, bishop d7. Of course, black is an exchange down, that's why black is trying to avoid simplifications and not allow white to trade off as many pieces as possible. g4, Robert Fontaine is choosing a very sharp line. He goes for complications, but let's see whom these complications will favor. Now comes knight takes g4 and knight takes f5. Bishop takes f5. Rook d5. Now if queen f8 then white can capture on f5 and then on e4, though I have to tell you that even in this case the engine gives black advantage. By the way, bringing the queen on f8 square was important because in this case already you are protecting the rook on c8 square. Let's go back, but after rook d5, instead of this passive queen f8 move, Envil made a shocking decision. Can you find his next move? Ready? He simply captured on d5. Look at this majestic queen sacrifice. C takes d5 and bishop e5. Now black will start exploiting the vulnerability of white king. Queen c1, bishop h2 check, king h1, rook h8. At this point the engine is evaluating the position as equal, though probably playing with the black pieces is easier and white has to make precise moves to defend successfully. Queen c4, white is now threatening a discovered check. Bishop d6 check king g1, here we see a repetition of moves and after king h1 b5 was played. Envil is trying to lure away white queen from this diagonal. And white captured on b5, which is a mistake. It was better to play queen e6 and still keep the pawn on c7 square under pressure. You will see the difference a bit later. After b5, queen takes b5 was played and it turns out that the queen on b5 square is actually out of the game. Now comes e3. Belek is playing very aggressively and is trying to rip open white's king side. Bishop f3. Well, if... F takes e3, then black can play bishop f4 check, and then bishop takes e3, and then win white rook. 
That's why after e3, white played bishop f3 is freeing this g2 square for the king. But it turns out that again after knight takes f2 check, white is forced to give up his rook. Otherwise, if a move like king g2, then but I can play bishop h3 check, if king takes h2 then bishop d7 discovered check and black will win white queen and with an extra piece this is going to be winning. That's why after knight f2 check we see rook takes f2, he takes f2, white is threatening to promote the pawn to a queen, king g2 and bishop g1. Now can you understand the difference of capturing on b5 and placing the queen on c6? If the queen were on c6 square then white could capture on c7 and could start giving some checks. But in this case the queen is out of the game and white played queen c6 trying to come after the pawn on c7 but already it's too late. Already there is a mate in 7 moves and Maxim Vacher Legraf manages to find the shortest way of checkmating white king. Rook h2 check, king g3, well if king f1 then we will see a brutal checkmate on the board. That's why after rook h2 check we see king g3. And now you can pause the video and try to find MVL's next move. Ready? In this position Maxim Vacher Legraf promoted his pawn to a knight. Look at this fantastic under promotion. This is actually the shortest path of checkmating white king. By the way, instead of promoting the pawn to a knight, if you promote your pawn to a queen, then in that case white can successfully give a perpetual check. That's why after king g3 we see this under promotion to a knight. King f4, rook h4 check, king g5. Now the rook on h4 is hanging, but MVL played another fantastic move. He played bishop e3 check. Another fantastic move where he's sacrificing his rook as well. King takes h4, g5 check, king h5, knight g3 check, and finally Robert Fontaine resigned. If king h6 then black can simply push forward his g pawn and we will see a brutal checkmate on the board. What a brilliant game and a mind blowing finish. We first saw an exchange sacrifice, then a queen sacrifice, then an under promotion to a knight and finally after knight g3 check white resigned in view of if king h6 then black can push forward his g pawn and he will get checkmated. Thanks for watching, I hope that you enjoyed this fantastic game. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave your comments and for more games, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will see you in the next video.